All right, Baruch Abayim. Welcome, everybody, or Baruch Abba, people will just say simpler. Uh, welcome to another installment of our Language of the Prophets series, Aliyah Yomi. So last time we went about 50 minutes in and we were only able to finish the first, maybe third, of uh, the first Aliyah from this week's Torah portion. So for those of you here early from Simchat Hashem, um, thanks for coming early. This, uh, just beware, this is a more language intense um, reading than we do in the normal drash, yeah? So it's going to be very deep in the Hebrew. You're welcome to stay. I, I think you can probably get something out of it, at least immersion, even if you're not studying Hebrew, but uh, it's really intended for those who are studying Hebrew. And then we'll have our normal drash at the normal time, yeah, afterwards. Okay. So this is Shemini, first Aliyah, part bait. And you should all be able to see my screen now. And uh, for this, it'll be open mic. So if you have a question, you can either type your question or you can speak it. In the normal Josh later today, we'll have closed mic. Okay. So feel free, whichever you feel more comfortable with. So continuing from last time, we're now in Vaikra, chapter 9, verse 9 through 16. We'll be discussing Bezrat Hashem. We can get through it all. I may pick up the tempo a bit. And here we are. So starting with verse Vav, that's 6. Vayona Moshe. All right, who wants to translate uh, this first part? The Vayoma Moshe Zehadavar. What's this mean? Anybody jump in there? Vayoma Moshe? How about just that part? Vayoma <laughs> Moshe. And Moses said this the word? Good. Asher tziva Adonai ta'asu. Who wants to do this part? Asher tziva Adonai. Maybe that. Those three words. Asher tziva Adonai. Do you guys know tziva? So tziva, the verb, it's related to a noun that you know. You know the noun mitzvah, right? So mitzvah, you know, it's a commandment. So tziva, this is the PL verbal form that means to do that same thing, to command, right? So asher, what's asher? Anybody? Asher? It's okay if you guys are shy, I can do more of the trip. Nice, which? Tziva Adonai. Tziva Adonai commanded. Good. All right. Ta'asu. So ta'asu, that's a bit harder to recognize. It's a lamed hey verb, right? And with lamed hey verbs, from asa, from that's right. Very good. That's right. From asa, the it ends in a hey, and our hey disappears. Oh, wait, it didn't draw it like I wanted to. <laughs> there, it's still not drawing right. Okay, we'll try a third time. Third time's a charm. There we go. Except the hey is supposed to be here. I am seeing hey asa to do, and the hey disappears. Right. So ta'asu, is this perfect or imperfect form? Imperfect. Right. So which Adonai commanded you doing, literally, is what it's saying, right? And it's interesting. So you will do, you shall do. The idea is it's present, continuous, into the future, and continues. It's not completed. You keep doing it for a long time. All right? Next line. Alechem kavod Adonai. Now this one's quite interesting. So who knows what Yera is? What's happening with Yera? Fear. Sha! Sure. Up here? I'm here. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, not fear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's if it was Yara, the verb. The verb is actually Ra'a, Reish Aleph. And again, it's another Lama Dei verb. Right? So the Hey disappeared. It would be fear if it was Yod Reish Aleph. Huh? It's, to appear. Oh, appear. Yes, correct. <laughs> Sorry, that's right. That's right. So, what binyan is it? How do you know this to appear? What's binyan? Is it 
verb converses? It is. It is. But what binyan is the verb? I think you said it. Say again. Oh, no, it's not kal. It's not kal. Because if it was kal, we'd have a different vowel here under the yod. It's, this is tricky. That's why I colorize it. So don't worry if you're having trouble. So basically what happens is this is a nifal binyan, right? And the noon, it can't leave a dagesh in the reish, right? It can't assimilate there because reish doesn't take a dagesh. So instead, in the in the call form, we would have had a chirik down here, a short chirik. So the dagesh comes down and we get compensatory lengthening. The short vowel chirik becomes a long vowel tsere. So this is kind of a telltale for imperfect nifal forms. You'll see the tsere there underneath the preformative letter, the yod. So that's how you know it's nifal. So yera, it's ra'a, but passive. So it's like he was seen, right? Or... I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. He was seen. Passive. <laughs> he was seen. So, and then we have the Vav second. So, he will appear. Aleichem. Before you all. What will appear? For his glory. Yeah, that's right. Kavod Adonai, right? Kavod Adonai. That's the subject. That's what will appear before you all. The Kavod Adonai will appear before you all. Okay. And this is very interesting. This is a theme I'll, I'll touch on later in the Drash today. Kavod, this is a telltale sign about the Mashiach. Oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes when we're talking about the Kavod Adonai, we're talking about the Messiah. The Messiah is, the kavod, is his Kavod, right? Is his glory, uh, the one who glorifies him also, right? When Mashiach's here, he's the one who gives all glory to the Father. And even Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, in his writings, he hints about this when he says, uh, he never says, I worship the Messiah. He never says, I pray the Messiah. He never says, I sing the Messiah. But what does he say? I glorify in the Messiah. Right? Because the Messiah, this is this is code word in Hebrew, the kavod Adonai, that, we're, that sometimes we're talking about the Mashiach. Again, not always, but it's it's one of these nice little... Is, right, some, is it the same as Shekinah? Uh, that's a very good question. Dr. Stern actually translates the doxas from the Greek, which maps to kavod. And there's a couple instances where he actually does translate that as shechilah in his Jewish New Testament. Or, or well, he's changed the name now. It used to be called Jewish New Testament. Now it's complete Jewish Bible. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so he actually does translate that way. And he makes a good argument for it about the brilliance and all this sort of thing from the kavod. And Shekhinah also was brilliant. And so, yeah, I think you can make a connection there for sure. It's not the only connection, but yeah, there definitely is some linguistic basis for making that connection. Yeah. Also, this also can refer to the fire, right, that we see the fire that comes down and consumes sacrifice. Sometimes that can also be referred to as the Kavod Adonai, right? It's basically something that the people could behold, right? And what else about the fire? The fire is very bright, right? It's an intense fire. It's a pure fire from Hashem in the purest place on the earth at that moment. And that, of course, is, we get another hint about this, about the Messiah also, right? That that he is the very light of the world, right? And so there's there's another kind of nice connection there. So, yeah, very good. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right, moving right along. Zion. Moshe. Lahavon Kahavel Mizbeach Vase, sorry, Vase Et Hamatefa, Havet Olatefa, the Haper Badacha, Ovead Haam. There we go. Sometimes with these trope, they sneak up on you and it's kind of, oh, okay. Geshaim, that's what this one's called. Okay. Well, that's easy. Who wants to take that? And Moses said unto Aaron. Good. What did he say? He said, Kalav el hamizbeach, the ase et chatatacha, vet olatacha, the chaper baadacha, vuve alham. Okay. So, Kalav, this is an imperative form, guys. Call imperative. From Karav, what's Karav mean? 
draw near. That's right. To so, draw near. good. Draw near, approach unto the Mizbeach. You guys know Mizbeach? Unto the altar. Good. The Ase, here's another imperative. So, what's Asa mean? To offer. Uh, nope. Asa, not al, not. To do? Yeah, that's to right. Do. That's right. To, to do, do or to make. make. Yep, yep. Do make. Sometimes in the nuance it can be prepare, right? Something like that. So just so we don't sound like cavemen, <laughs> you do now the purification offering, right? So to make, to prepare. But that's all correct. The chaptat the cha your right. Here's pronominal suffix your at the end, right? You guys recognize cha. And I don't know if you noticed, I uploaded yesterday. I uploaded yesterday. Uh, some uh, kind of a little presentation about some of the alternative forms of the uh, pronominal suffixes, etc. If you haven't checked out in the language snippets part, maybe you'd enjoy that. Maybe it can help some. So what, what's a chata'at with a dagesh here? What's this mean? Purification. Good. That's offering. right. Very good. Very good. So your purification offering. So prepare your own purification offering. The et olatecha. What's this mean? Olatecha. You're right. And your burnt offering. Yeah, good. And your burnt offering. Good. I.e. your whole burnt offering, right? The chapel ba'adcha ad'ha'am. Okay. What does kipel mean? The P-L. Kipel. Here it's written the kapel. Okay, that's correct. Technically, it's to cover, right? That's one of the glosses. To cover. Um, it, we it's we, we learned that it's closely related to the Akkadian word uh, kipuru, which is to purge, to purge, and that's kind of interesting when we understand that with the chayta, with the sin, or with things that even are not sin, right? Just impurities, we're purifying them with a purification offering, right? And with the ola, or maybe it's the two together even, we are purging something now, which usually is translated atone, right? You're right, it's covering, atoning, all those things are fine. I just want you to be aware of its kind of linguistic history. I think purging makes some sense, because also there's other times in the text where it talks about uh, you shall atone the altar, right? You make atonement for the altar. What? Did the altar sin? <laughs> it makes no sense. But if you understand it, it's purging, right? <laughs> or at least is that one of the nuances that, okay. Right. Just like we talked about sin offering not making a lot of sense for this. When the Nazir, when the Nazarite, when somebody dies around him or someone fed him something he's not supposed to eat and he didn't know, it wasn't his fault, right? Why would it be a sin offering when he did not sin? But a purification offering makes sense. So too, understanding this as a purging, right? There's, it's, it's going to purge something from the person. Okay, do you guys know this word ba'ad? I don't think you've had this ba'ad. Ba'ad. Yeah. So ba'ad is like offense. Uh, no, no, it's kind of hard to uh, to bring into English. It's like for the sake of, right? Like, although the problem is we have another word for that, leman. Ba'ad. How would you translate ba'ad? It's like who the beneficiary is. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you can think of a better English word. You may even just say beneficiary, right? Okay. Or benefit, maybe something like that, right? It's like, who it's being done for. This is kind of adding to chaper. The chaper ba'ad, for the benefit of cha, of you, right? So for your sake, kind of, right? Uh, I'm hesitant to say sake because usually we say lema'am, for, for the sake of. Okay? Uve'ad, and for the sake of ha'am. That's right. The ase'et. Korban ha'am v'chaper ba'adam asher tziva adonai. Okay. So what's this mean? The asay et korban. What's that mean? It's another imperative. The asay. Asa, what's asa? You guys had it a second ago. Somebody, asa. So to do or make. To do? Good. Yep, to do or to make. So literally, and do the korban ha'am. What's korban ha'am? Offering. Yes. Offering of the people, right? So the, peop the people's offering, right? It's a construct, right? Maybe it will decide to draw in a moment. 
<laughs> come on, draw. Oh, now we get the hourglass. That's funny. Uh, come, come, come. Speedy Gonzalez, that's what I call my computer. Oh, it kind of made it interesting, like an angle. Nice. It really did put some thought into it. So, Korban Ha'am, this is the people's offering. So, first, we have your own offerings, right? He says, So, he's talking to the Kahanim, the priest, saying, for your, for your own offering, your own pur purification offering, and your own whole burnt offering, right? So that you might purge or atone for your sake. And also for the sake of the people, now take, sorry, pardon me, do or make, the people's offering, that it might atone or purge. Notice I'm being a bit flexible with the Vav here, right? Ba'adam, what's Ba'adam mean? If we're going to say Ba'ad is like sake, what's Ba'adam? What's Am at the end? What's happening there? What is that suffix? What kind of suffix is it? Is that in the congregations? Uh, no, no. No, I just want to know what the suffix is. So what's the am at the end of a word? What's that mean? Uh, plural. Yes, that's right. Plural, plural third person, right? So the adam mm -hmm. is for their sake, for their sake is the am, right? We could have yes. also seen hem at the end too, right? Hem, right? And uh, for you all's sake. Right, but I die from for my sake, but the cha, etc. etc. If it was all ladies that were being atoned for, it would just be a noon, but I done, right? Okay, oh, and look, look, I have some highlighted words I didn't show my notes for. Oops, <laughs> so there's my ba'ad for the for the benefit of that's better for the benefit of, right? Okay, yeah, there's that note about the Akkadian language. This next part, these next few words. According to the Masorah, that's our textual tradition. That is the Hebrew Bible, right? That's where we get the vowels from, is the Masorah, right? The vowels. And there's also other notes in there, right? Which oftentimes do not get translated uh, into you know, other languages. They don't bring, they don't think it's important. But I think it's interesting, the other notes in the Masorah. And in the Masorah, it says that this phrase, it's only twice in the Bible. Here and in Leviticus 10, 17. Those are the only verses which end in this phrase. Which have it at the end. Oh, okay, maybe that's interesting. According, Ka'ashir is like according to how, right? Or in the way that. It's kind of hard. It's like, like which, right? It's literally what it says. So who knows why we have a patach here under the cuff? What's with the patach? Why is that there? Is it a preposition with article? There's no article. No article. If it was an article, it would be a comments. It would be comments, right? Uh, because we try to put the article on the Aleph, and then we convert the link into comments, yeah? Uh, okay, getting the uh, short vowel from... Ah, yon. Good. That's right. Everybody heard what she said? So we try to put a schwa under the prepositions, right? But then we'd be violating the rule. You can't have two schwas in a row at the beginning of the word, right? So what happened? We, if it was a normal schwa, we would like the tulcherik, right? But this is no normal schwa. This is, no, it isn't. It's a composite schwa, right? And with the case of composite schwa, we take the sound, where I'm pointing, the one that's associated with it, and that's what we copy. It's copied over here, boom. So that's why it's ka'asher, okay? I just want you to start noticing that pattern. So Ka'asher, according to how, Siva Adonai, Adonai had commanded. Okay? Verse 8. Sorry, I had to stop some background noise. Vaikrava Rodela Mizbeach. So what does that mean? What does that phrase mean? Vaikrav Aharon El HaMizbeach. By the way, Aharon drew near the altar. Nice, good. Then Aaron drew near or approached to the altar. By the way, if anybody popped in early, thinking this is going to be like normal Josh, and you're like, oh my gosh, if it's like. If there's like blood on the wall from your nose bleeding, <laughs> then don't worry, you can leave and come back later. I won't be offended. All right. I don't want anybody to feel like you have to stay if you're bored or something. 
uh, really, this is intended for those who've done some Hebrew, right? So, but again, you're, everybody's welcome. But if it's too, we'll do the normal Josh at about 4.30, 4.45. Yeah? So, it's, again, you're welcome all to stay. But if you're in over your head and you just don't like it, and you're not, it's not edifying, I will not be offended if you leave, if you check out for a while, and take a nap for 30 minutes or something. All right. Uh, continuing. Okay, you guys know the verb shachat? I think you had this vocabulary. Shachat. Slaughter. Yes, good. Slaughter, usually with the idea of ritual slaughter. They have this also in Ugaritic, and it was always used to mean like a ritual sacrifice. In that case, even, even closer to zevach, the sacrifice. So, et egel, he shall slaughter ritually, right? So then is he shall slaughter, mm. yes, the egel, yep, the, it's a baby one though, right? The, the baby bull, hachata'at, the and egel is a baby, of the, so here you actually have a construct, and you can tell by the accent marks in there, ha, tipicha, that's what these guys are, la, 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 you know, mark it in construct, let's make sure. I haven't been marking the construct a lot lately because I think you guys get it. But we have a new class, and uh, they don't know all these things yet, you know. And I don't think we can count on them just to start on the sheet. I think some people are going to be eager to be caught up, right, with Leviticus. And so, you know, just in case, every once in a while I'll go deeper into the easier grammar. So that's construct state, right? Even though there's no makef here, right? Aigil ha-ta'at. So the the uh, the young bullock or the young cow of the purification offering, right? Or which is the purification offering? Asher lo. What's this mean? Asher lo. Asher lo. Lo 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 lo. Anybody chime in? What is it? Asher lo uh, to his. Okay, which what? Is his? Yeah, which is his. Great, great, very good. Which was his, which is his. So this is telling us that Aharon had to provide his own bull. You see? It's from his own stock. It's not provided from what the worshippers bring. This is for his own. Okay? Tet. Vayakrivu b'nei Aharon et hadam. A live vayit bull. It's ba'o badam ba'itain al kor. Pardon me, karmot amiz be'ach. I must mess up when I'm thinking karbonot. I'm like, why does it say karmot? <laughs> All right. Okay, so vayak. Okay, where are we at? Vayak rivu b'nei aharon. Okay, et adam. What's this mean? What's the binyan? The sons of Aaron Jr. The sons of Aaron what? Okay, so it's almost drew near. That's what it would mean if this verb was in the kal. Yes, it's he feel. So, so it's not that they are drawing near. What are they? They're bringing something near, right? They're presenting it, right? So, what are they presenting? Et hadam alive. Hadam. What's hadam? Blood. Yeah, the blood. And then a live. And two. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So so exactly correct. This is a he fill form, yeah? So he fill is to cause, right? To cause to do something, right? So the subject is Benaharon. So the Benaharon will cause to to draw near. They're not drawing near themselves. That would be called it's he fill to cause to do it. They're presenting something. They're causing it to come near. What are they causing to come near? Et adam, the blood. So the blood's been collected already from the chachata'at. Okay? Elav, unto him. So they're bringing it near to Aharon, to the Kohen HaGadol, to the Kohen HaMashiach, the Mashiach, the, the high priest. Okay? Bayit boho, it's ba'o badam. Okay? So this verb, I don't think you know this, taval. This isn't a call. Taval means to dip, to dip, 
Like you get some chips and you want to dip them in the cheese sauce or whatever. That's taval. Okay. Uh, no, a handful is not correct. <laughs> I don't know why I have that there. That was probably a copy copy text there. It's not a handful. This is a verb meaning to dip. <laughs> probably I copied this animated block from another slide and then I didn't. Okay. Dip. D I P. Handful is a kofetz. Uh, okay. Or kofetz. Okay, there we go. Or if it's an egg roll, if it's a fist, okay, dip, okay. So, and he shall dip etzba o. Do you guys know etzba? What the etzba is? Etzba. Finger. In Shemot. Finger. Yeah, in Shemot, the um, the chartul name Mitzrayim, the shesh parak, the scribes of the book of life. These guys and, and later the magicians. They would duplicate many of the miracles of God, but when they could not duplicate it, they'd said to Pharaoh, oh, this is the etzba elokim, the finger of God, right? Or a finger of God's, depending on their, how they were thinking about it. So it's too much. Near mortals can't do it. So etzba o is his finger. And in many contexts, it means his index finger. Badam. What's badam? In blood. Very good. Blood. Very good. In, in blood. blood. In blood. In the blood is more correct. Yeah, right. Notice she corrected herself because she saw the patach and the dagash, yeah? Signs of the definite article. So if it was bedam, it would be with blood or in blood, but badam in the blood. Namely, which blood? The blood which yakrivu banai, which his sons brought, right? They brought etadam. Okay. Vaiten al kamot amizbeach. So this verb, does anybody recognize which verb this is? If you were to look it up in a dictionary, what would you look for? What would we look for? Natan. That's from Natan. Very good, very good. Nice. Very good. It's a pay noon verb. That means there's a noon in the first position. The first radical, the first root letter is a noon. Ah, come on, yeah, I confused. Let me draw. That's supposed to be a noon, right? And the noon assimilates. So in ancient Hebrew, it was vayin tain. But then people, just to make it easier to say, they'd say vayit tain, right? And so that's why there's the dot inside the tav. The noon, he went inside of the tav. You can think of it like that, right? Or he caused the tav to double, right? Just like our in legal became illegal example in English. In meaning not plus legal became illegal with two L's. Okay, so Natan can mean give, right? That's probably the gloss that you guys learned. But I shared with you that in the priestly context, and even in other contexts in Scripture, it can mean to set or to place, right? Like to position something there. A, a nice example is, I believe, in Tehillim. I can't remember which psalm, but it says, it says, Vaiten, what was it? Was it Vaiten lecha et mishalot livecha. Right? And, and he will oftentimes turn that it's and he will give to you the desires of your heart. Although the word there, Misha'alot, is interesting. It's like the questionings of your heart related to Sha'ela, a question. Right? So we have many words for desire we could have chosen, but the poet chooses the like the questionings of your heart, right? Which is interpreted to mean in the various translations as the desires, the things you want. And so I say instead of translating here, and he will give you the desires of your heart, instead we understand Natan in the priestly meaning that he will set the desires, your desires, in your heart. Meaning that we are, when we are in line with Hashem's will, he is the one that puts the very desires there in the first place. You see? Because we want what he wants. Wow. We're, right? We're eager servants. Wow, was, I was going to ask you, in Psalm 37, I had an insight that, when you are when you trust God and obey Him and love Him and seek Him, He is the one who puts the desires in your heart. Yes, very good. Look at that, Ruach Hakodesh oh, is moving. <laughs> I had that insight. <laughs> yes, amen. Lovely. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Lovely. Nice, nice testimony. That's very good. That's that's a nice confirmation. Yeah. So you see, that's it's possible to translate that way because this word Natan. 
about 75%, 80% of the time, it means give, right? But then the other 15 to 20% of the time, it means to set or to place. And very often in Leviticus, that's what it means, right? And Leviticus being the holiest book in the Torah, which makes it the holiest book in the entire Tanakh, right? It's the holiest book in the Hebrew Bible. And so we understand then in that psalm that when you're in line with his will, he's the one who puts them in your heart in the first place. So of course they'll be fulfilled. Your desires then are from him, right? And since he wants what's best for us, that's really a better thing to want. So if we want something that is bad for us, it just develops in sorrow, right? It just develops in pain. And so it's much better even to pray for this. Like, Lord, please, titen li, right? Et misho lo levavi, like, set within me the desires of my heart, right? You can even pray for that to happen. And so that he can remove the, the bad desires that are not useful for you, that are not helpful for you or the kingdom. All right, so continuing. So, so this is not there. Not, they're not going to give it. He's not going to give it. And said he will set it, he will place it, al karmot on his bayach. Do you guys know what karmot means, karmot? It's, the word is keren in the singular. It's a seglet. Keren, with two segols, right? The dot, 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 those guys. A keren is a horn. Like, I will lift up the keren Yeshua, the horn of salvation, right? Okay, karmot means horns, right? So, remember the altars, they had horns, right? So, al karmot on his bayach. So he will set then it upon the horns of the Mizbeach. You guys know what that is? Let Adam. Now look at this, this is interesting. Uh, here we have the object coming before the verb, right? What does it usually tell you when the object is before the verb? Here's our verb. And here's the object. What does it tell you when it's out of order? And we're not dealing with poetry. It's not Psalms. This is just normal SBH, standard biblical Hebrew, Torah Hebrew. It's not LBH, not late biblical Hebrew, although it also would have the same meaning there. It's not poetry. It's, uh, okay, some are saying the audio has gone out. Okay, I'm going to have a message here that the network connection has been re-established. So I hope you guys can hear me. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. Okay, so... Um, what does it mean when we have the object comes before the verb and we're not dealing with poetry, right? So this is Torah Hebrew, it's not Psalms. So here's our verb, but here we have the object, et. So what does that tell you that it comes first? For those who are joining us, um, sit tight. We'll begin the regular drosh. Usually, even though it's scheduled at 4.30, usually it ends up being 4.45 anyways. People don't show up in time. So sit tight. You're welcome to stay and listen. We are just doing uh, the first aliyah in the in the original Hebrew from our Torah portion today, discussing it kind of in depth with the grammar. So stick around. Um, we'll have the, the standard drosh soon, yeah? So guys, what does it mean when you have et first? Look, we have et first. Like, look at the normal word order. Norm yeah. Normally we have verb. Look, we have verb, right? Subject. And then we have et, right? And then we have the object. Object. Do you remember what happens if I were to put the object in front of the verb? What's that telling me? Like, here's the verb. Yatsak is the verb. And the object, the et, hadam, it comes first. What's that telling me? All right, I'll remind you. That means there's special emphasis. When you're dealing with standard biblical Hebrew, not poetry, and you start to move the word order around, there's emphasis. The writer is emphasizing something. So for some reason, probably for protocol purposes, he wants to make sure the priest get it right, right? So he says, set it upon the altar, the horns of the altar, and the blood, Yatsak al Yasodam is Beach. Okay, so that sucks. There's some kind of emphasis. It's like bold. The blood. Don't get it messed up, guys. The blood. Yatsak. Yatsak means to pour out. We have this uh, same word in Ugaritic, Yatsak, to pour out. In Phoenician, it actually meant to cast an image, which is interesting because in LBH, late biblical Hebrew, I mean, not the Torah, but much later in the prophets, this word is actually used oftentimes synonymously with a molten image. 
right? Meaning, they'll, they'll, they'll oftentimes, speaking derisively about someone, a prophet will write, they pour it out. They poured it out. What did they pour out? He's saying they made an image. You see, they made an image. So the idea of molten metal being poured out into a cast or whatever to make something to worship. Right? But originally, Yatsak, as we see in Ugritic, just meant to pour out. So now the blood, Yatsak, he poured out El Yesod HaMezbeach. Who knows what Yesod means? There's a uh, First Fruits of Zion course that many people have gone through called HaYesod. That's your jog in memory. What's how you go? Someone was about to say it. This is an open mic class, so you can you can speak up if you know. Speak up or type if you're shy. I'm watching the chat also. So Yesod means foundation, right? Foundation. Okay? And uh, so Upon or until the foundation of the Mizbeach. You guys know Mizbeach, right? Hey, any comments or questions before we go to the last part of the Liyah? You were you were asking Rob what uh why is the rec object uh before the verb? Yeah. Oh that that one in yellow. Yeah, it's up. Yeah, why et hadam is first, right? And it's emphasizing. When, when that happens, it's to show special emphasis for some reason. We don't always know the reason, but we should take note that if we don't know, that we don't know, right? That it's, there's something in the text there. You can't just translate it to English with no footnote or no bold or no italicies or no something to draw attention to the reader that, hey, um, for some reason, the author is emphasizing this here, right? Like there was a concern that they might make a mistake, right, or protocol, or something like that, okay? So, a common example of this would be like, you know, like, uh, uh, did you, did you count the people? Right, imagine a leader comes in, finds out that someone took a census of everyone in the kahal. Someone was counting everybody, pointing at their heads, one, two, three, four, five, which, of course, this invites the, the ayin hara, right? It's not a good thing to do, right? And so, so imagine, say I come in and I saw someone doing that, or I thought I did. Maybe I misunderstood. And I said, did you count the people? Right? Let's say I asked in, in Hebrew, right? They can answer, lo, lo, et hakesev, et hakesev. No, the coins we counted, right? Or the tokens we counted. Right? This is how it happens in the synagogue, right? Oftentimes, if you want to find out how many people are there, you can do something like everybody puts something like a token in a bag and you count the tokens, right? Or in a hat or, you know, something like that, right? Or you count the chairs or, you know, something like that. You don't draw attention to the people for the Ayanara. But that's a whole other lesson about Ayanara. Yep, so, and it's not just a stupid superstition and it's not a crazy spirit flying around. Ooh, it's the evil eye. Oh, it's going to get me. <laughs> it's, it's, these are misconceptions. It's all about the, the justice system of the divine council of Hashem and inviting justice on you when you really want a delay. Let's let the court proceeding try us later after we've had time to make teshuvah for some of our crimes to our fellow man. Okay, let's move on. Last slide before we start with our standard drash. We are on verse Yod which is 10. This is Leviticus 9, verse 10. Okay. Let That's our at Machta, the end of the clause marker, that's why we're stopping there, even though it's only two thirds of the verse. All right, so, Ve'et Hachelev, what's that mean? What's Hachelev? Anybody know? Chelev. Chelev. The fat. Okay, so the gloss. This is the bloody part we read. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The bloody part that we read. 
Uh, right, right. <laughs> so the fat is the chaylev, right? The chaylev. But uh, you should also know there's another meaning to this word in other contexts. Um, when used, this can also mean like the primo part, the choicest part of, but not when we're talking about like the animal. Like So the chaylev ha'aretz, right? It's the fat of the land, right? That's the good, that's like the produce that the land produces, right? So Again, when you learn a word, you should not learn just a very simple gloss that fits in the verse you're looking at. You should try to learn, you know, the one, two, three, whatever the other meanings for the word are, so that you don't get stuck somewhere else in the Bible. So, ve'et ha'chelet, so also the fat, ve'et ha'kelayot, and also the kidneys. Uh, and, and actually, what's interesting about the kelayot, this is the heart, metaphorically, okay? So if a person is talking about his... David sometimes will say, David Amelech will say, kill your tie, my kidneys, right? So I've, I've kind of driven home to you guys that Lev and Levav does not mean heart in Hebrew, right? Even though, yes, it means heart, it doesn't mean heart in the, the European sense of the word. Like, oh, my heart is to you. you know? it's, it's not the seat of emotion. The heart is the seat of, of sanity, the seat of the mind, the seat of the will, right? So... That's why when we say that that Hashem hardened Pharaoh's heart, or Pharaoh hardened his own heart, it doesn't mean like he's stuffing down his emotions or something, right? It means he strengthened his resolve, right? He set his mind to the purpose, right? Like this. So you need to be careful that when you read translations into English, or Tagalog, or Visayan, or whatever you read, Chibakan, or whatever you're reading, when you read it, if it's talking about the heart, um, be careful with your interpretation because it's probably not what you're thinking as a as a even though we're not westerners over here right but the the influence of the west ex expands over here <laughs> from espanol and english so it's probably the mind right so you shall have that means you shall love Hashem your god with all of your mind right all of your mind all of your thought life when Rav Shul talks about having the full mind of the Mashiach, that's what he's talking about, right? Guard your thoughts. Guard your thought life. Control your mind. Don't let it start to tempt you and lead you astray and, and do funky thoughts or something. Instead, we, we control it. Now, our heart is actually, in the Hebraic understanding, it's the kidneys. The kidneys. And so that's what this is saying. So when David HaMelech, when he's really talking about his emotions, he says, Kill your tie. My kidneys, right? That's where the ancients... Also, sometimes it'll say even kar, karbai, my kerev, my innards, right? Like where rich is like your guts. In Yiddish, we say the kishki, right? The kishki can say, I feel it in my kishki, right? But those lower organs, the kidneys and the guts, were how the ancient world, the ancient Near East understood as being where the emotions are, because that's really where you feel it, right? You don't usually feel it in your heart. Yeah, maybe sometimes... But usually, like, if you're nervous, you don't feel it in your heart. You feel it in your stomach, right? <laughs> you feel it down lower, right? These sorts of things. So, or a deep foreboding. It's not usually where the heart's located. It's lower. And so the ancients, that's how we use it metaphorically. So, the, of course, here it's not a metaphor. Here it's, it's literal. So the fat and the kidneys. Okay, this is kind of an obscure word. I don't expect you to know this. Well, it comes from the word yoter. Yoter, which is from yatar. Yatar. Yatar is to be extra, to remain, right? So the yotar, it's the lobe of the liver. It's that little part that grows off of it. So, And the liver's lobe, or, or here maybe we'll just say lobe here, but it's kind of, you don't even need to say liver. When you see yotar in this context, we know it's the kidney's lobe, pardon me, the liver's lobe. Mean ha kaved. What's kaved mean? You guys recognize the shoresh, the root? Seven minutes more, we'll start our normal drush. Okay, I'm just going to go quick, more quickly, okay? Ah? Kaved? Kowards? No, 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 no. No, Kaved, it's like Kavod, right? So Kavod, which is like glory, right? Or we have Kibed et Avicha, honor your father, right? Kibed, right? It literally means to make him heavy, make him weighty in your life, right? Kibed et Avicha vetimecha, make them weighty, make them important, right? And, and the opposite with Israel, those who mikalalecha, those who treat you lightly, I will curse. Or it's it's a misunderstanding when people say those who curse you, I shall curse. Although there is a line that says that, but this particular line, the nuance is about treating you lightly. That people should not even treat Israel lightly. 
They should treat Israel as heavyweights. Pay attention when Israel talks, etc., etc. Right? Otherwise, they will be cursed. And in this case, this is the actual organ, which is the heaviest organ. It's the liver, hakaved, the heavy organ. Okay. Min hachata'at, from the purification offering. Hiktiha mizbecha. Okay, so you shall make it smoke. Make it go up as thick smoke, as incense smoke. Hamizbecha. The hay at the end, this is the hay locative. Direction towards Hamizbech. And I'm picking up the speed here so that we don't start our normal drosh too late. Okay. Kasher, kasher. Okay. Kasher, tziva Adonai et Moshe. According to how Adonai commanded Moshe. Verse 11. Vetabasa. Okay. And the skin, right? Literally, literally that's flesh, the skin, and or the hide. Saraf. Saraf Burn with fire. Burn in the fire. Pardon me. Burn in the fire. See we have our the down there, the comets. Right? Remember before we we're saying this could not be the because there's no, it should be a comets before an aleph, right? So here's comets before the aleph. Ba'esh, in the fire. Nichutz, from outside la machane, of the camp. And it looks a bit weird, like it's saying to the camp. And I know you guys have learned lamed meaning to or for, but we actually learned from Ugritic that lamed can sometimes mean from. So outside from the camp or outside of the camp. Okay, verse 12. Ba'ishchat et ha'ola. And slaughter, I know you guys know these words, you translated them already on the previous slide. Uh, and he shall slaughter the Ola, the whole burnt offering. Saviv. Sorry, that's too fast. Okay. So what is Yam Tsiu? What's Yam Tsiu mean? This is kind of tricky. For those of you who are there, try to remember the vowel that Dr. Debera pointed out. For recognizing this binyan. What is the binyan? You guys recognize the binyan? It is he fill binyan. He fill. Yeah, that's right. And, and do you recognize that? <laughs> sorry, the computer doesn't draw really what I want every time. <laughs> There's. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Seafield, that's what I was trying to draw, that crazy H. <laughs> it's the Fatah under the Yod. This is our hint. Fatah. In the imperfect form, if you have a Fatah there, it's telling you it's Seafield. It's the cause or the form, right? The hay fell away. Right? So in ancient Hebrew, it would have been Yah meets, pardon me, Yah, Yam, Yah, Am means you, but the hay fell away. It's so hard to say, you see? So Yam, Siu. So Matzah is to find or to, to catch up with. Right? So in this case, the Bene Aharon, they shall, they shall, yeah, that's right, they shall uh, cause it to catch up with Elav to him. Et Adam, what? The blood. Vayizra Kehu, Zarak is to sprinkle. And they will sprinkle who? Who? What's who mean? Who means he, right? It's a suffix, pronominal suffix. It's the same as having a vav in the end of the verb, yeah? Meaning the blood. The blood is the he it's talking about. Alam is beach, upon the altar. Saviv. Saviv means all around. We get um, the Hebrew word for dreidel. You guys know the Yiddish word dreidel. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Dreidel, 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 with dreidel I will play, right? On Hanukkah, right? So dreidel is a Yiddish word, but... Svivon is the Hebrew translation. Svivon, coming from this word. Saviv, the verb is savav, to go all around, right? So all around the altar. Verse Yogimel, we're almost done, just three more verses. Et ha'ola imtsiyu This one caught me off guard. Elav v'tachea v'et Ha-rosh. Okay. Again, notice the object is before the verb, right? So, and now again, this matzah, if you just look at the Hebrew gloss, matzah usually means to find, but we learned from Ugaritic that it means to overtake, like to reach, right? So, and the ola, 
This is hefil again. Look at hefil. You have your preformative hay and your yod before the third root letter. Those of you who are just coming in, sit tight. We're about to begin our normal drosh. Don't worry. The whole thing's not going to be like this. This was for those who wanted to come early and do a little in-depth in the Hebrew stuff. This is from the first aliyah of the Torah portion, okay? So, as he says, the screen is frozen. Sit tight. Hopefully, it'll work itself out. They shall cause it to reach a live, what? Lin tacheha, its pieces. Ve'ev ha'rosh, and the head. Vayak tel. This is, again, a hefa form. See the, the patach under the yod? So they shall cause it to become smoky, like cause it to smoke or turn it into smoke. Rashi says, when the heavenly fire would come down. Alam is beath, upon the altar. Verse 14. Is it okay? Oh, Esau's here. Nice. Esau says in Arabic, we say someone is heavy, implying he has a lot of authority or power. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. There's a saying I never understood. There's this old song in the States. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. So I, I, don't, know what the, I don't know what they mean by that. <laughs> like what? He, I, I don't know. So there must be some other meaning to being heavy, like being a heavy or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice comparison, Esau, in the Arabic. Okay, and then, uh, let's see. Okay, so 14. So, rachatz, I think this was one of your vocabulary words. You guys should have known this, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to translate the rest. I'm not going to call on you. So, and he will wash the kerev. So, look, we have, again, this kerev. It's from the same root, right, as our korban and vayikrivu, etc. But the kerev is the insides, the kishki, the guts, right? So, the guts... He will wash the guts and the kera'i'ayim, that's the, the, the leg parts, and make them go up as smoke or turn them into smoke. Al ha'ola, with the ola, right, with the whole burnt offering. Al, it can mean upon or it can mean with. Ha'mizbecha, yeah? notice the, the little pink hay, that's halakative, so, so that the smoke will go in the direction towards that altar. Verse 15. Oh, the audio's out. Okay, hold on. Let me just check real quick. Huh. Let me know when you guys can hear me again. Internet works well all week. No problems until today. Oh, I lost the connection to the Go to Meeting server. Look at that. Okay, well, I'll just keep teaching and then we'll, so we can at least have this done. Well, I play with Korban. And he shall present, that means cause are drawn near. This is Hefil et Korban. Again, we have looked at Kerov, the offering. Ha'am, the people's offering. Right, so first for himself, then for the people. Okay, glad the connection's back, guys. Uh, so here, this is from Lakach. The Lamed is missing. This happens with Lakach. The Lamed goes away a lot of times. So it's not a PL. It's just that the Lamed assimilated into the Kof. So, and he will take the se'ir, the goat, of the hachata'at, of the purification offering, asher la'am, which belongs to the people, vayishchatehu, and he will shachat, he will ritually slaughter it. In Ugaritic, this word is only, it's actually closer to sacrifice, closer to zavach, right? So, shachat, it has a ritual aspect to it. It's related to sacrifices. Sacrifice who it, vayishchatehu, and... It will, and he will purify him, or purify it, karishon, like the first one. Notice purify. This is where we get the word purification offering. This is why chata'at, the better translation is purification offering rather than sin offering, because it comes from this verb in the PL. Chate is to purify. Chata is to sin. So if there was no dot here, then that would mean sin offering. Okay, verse 16. Last verse. 
לא יקרב And he will present, he will cause to come near the Ola, the whole burnt offering. And he will prepare it, literally do it, according to the Mishpat, right? the decree, according to the decree. All right. Any comments or questions?